Japan will host the Olympic and Paralympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. This international event that draws people from around the world is seen as the perfect opportunity for Japan to showcase its attractions. With the Olympics, a country can demonstrate its national strength. It is a medium for Japan to promote itself internationally. That is also one of the functions of hosting the Games. Promoting the attractions of Japan around the world. So what are those attractions? Is it simply the concept of omotenashi or hospitality? Are there other aspects of Japan that Japanese themselves have overlooked? Those are the questions being asked as Japan seeks to discover its strengths with the aim of contributing to unity among countries in Asia and around the world. This October, an international symposium was held in Japan with overseas experts in Japanese history and culture asked to identify local attractions unappreciated by the Japanese and to discuss ways to better promote those aspects to a global audience. One of the lecturers was Barack Kushner. Considered a Japan expert, he previously worked in Iwate Prefecture as an assistant English teacher and has been researching Japanese history at the University of Tokyo and Chinese history at universities in China and Taiwan. その Mr. Kushner points out the need for national discussions on the essence of being Japanese and of Japan, adding that there are many attractions in the country that its people have overlooked. すぐれてる教育もあります。技術の方とかね。あの政治の方とか。軍事主義的な国から民主主義的な国に変わっていったような経験から、あの、そういうような何をすればいいか、何をその安定してる民主制度を導入するような国に、あの、歩める、こう、
Mr. Kushner says the flexibility and diversity behind the development of various types of ramen are the essence of the attraction and strength of the Japanese. The interesting thing then about ramen is it demonstrates uh, perhaps the flexibility of Japanese cuisine and the flexibility of Japanese culture that it can adapt to so many different regions and still become so popular. And because of this competition and the variety of flavors in Japanese ramen, it's created a bigger boom. And I think it's one of the reasons we're starting to see ramen in London, in Paris, and in New York, because even though it's a somewhat hybrid and it grew up in Japan, like many Japanese ideas or products, it can also, it can also adapt to overseas. It can also adapt to things outside of Japan, and that's why you're seeing an international ramen boom now. Kitty Persertsu received his master's at Keio University in Japan and is a researcher specializing in international relations in East and Southeast Asia. Recently, he has been looking into the subject of soft power in East Asia. あの、健康的で、あの、人生の生活を起こるためにはどんな製品がいいのか。日本の会社、日本企業はいつも考えて、くれます。Mr. Persertsuk points to what he calls life innovation, the ability to make everyday life more convenient and comfortable as one of Japan's attractions. For example, Boxed meal delivery services that bring ready-to-eat food to the doorsteps of customers, morning, noon, and night. They are used by many elderly people who are physically too weak to go outside and offer nutritionally balanced and strictly quality controlled dishes. And the industry is expected to expand further in the future. Another example is Pado, <laughs> a therapy robot that responds to speech and expresses emotion with contact. This communication-enabled animal-shaped robot has been adopted by elderly care facilities as one way to prevent memory loss, forgetfulness and dementia of residents, as well as for its therapeutic effects. Services and technologies for daily life that were developed under the Japanese concept of hospitality to deliver convenience and comfort. They are what Mr. Prasertsuk calls life innovation. And at a panel discussion held after the symposium, I've mentioned that one of the biggest strengths of Japan is the pursuit of innovation. New innovations don't necessarily happen within a single country. What's being talked about now is open innovation of countries working together to create new technologies and new demand. Tadashi Okamura says it is crucial for countries to join hands to drive innovation. That he believes will lead to global unity. ジュージョナノワケイケンですね。日本の経験、特に社会変革の経験です。特にアジア諸国にとっては日本の道歩んできています。日本で発生したこと、日本で発生した問題、今アジアの国々でも発生しています。Mr. Prasertsuk says the experience of Japan in adapting to social changes is another strength of the country. During the panel discussion, several participants also pointed out that Japan's efforts to deal with its aging society will become a model for other Asian countries to follow in the future. Directly addressing the issue of an aging and shrinking population, 
and working towards effective policies to overcome the obstacles. This is one of the things that Japan wants to show the world. A rapidly aging population is an issue that many countries in Asia have in common. So Japan should demonstrate how to move forward. By providing an effective model, Japan can make a significant contribution. Nobuhiko Shima, who moderated the discussions, summed up the main points. The Cool Japan concept won't spread simply by promoting anime, manga and games. There's environmental technology, agricultural technology, washoku, high-tech, nanotech, and more recently medical technology. I think Japanese people may be too modest. I think modesty tends to draw people in. In that sense, what I've been thinking about recently is the idea of building a country with a good personality. Then people in other countries will say they want to come here or live here. And if we're going to make something, the cost might be relatively high, but we should make things that are safe, secure and good. I believe those are the aspects that we should promote to the world. Diversity, life innovation, safety and security. Attractions of Japan that Japanese themselves have overlooked. The challenge for the country will be finding a way to promote its strengths while contributing to global unity.